Eric Halfen from Analog Devices, who brings extensive experience in cybersecurity solutions. As part of ADI's Cybersecurity Center of Excellence, Halfen has taken on the role of Security Systems Manager for Industrial Solutions. Leveraging his experience as a cybersecurity program manager in the defense industry, Halfen is focused on developing leading security solutions to, to meet key market demands in industrial IoT. Security is often considered a feature or point solution necessary to deploy the next IoT solution. However, what role could it play in accelerating innovative solutions to enable sustainable global ecosystems, protect workers and consumers alike, and build healthier communities? Building the next digital solution in markets such as electrification, 5G, digital health, and smart manufacturing requires standardization of security requirements and the ability to uphold uniformity for interoperability within highly constrained endpoints. In his presentation, Halfen will explain how security approaches can free teams to build a better future. So without further ado, I'll hand over to Eric. Yeah, thank you, Joe, and uh, thank you everyone for tuning into this. Um, before I jump into the presentation, I just want to share a little bit more about my role and uh, in, in analog devices. Um, I get the opportunity to uh, have a very forward-looking approach for the security needs of our markets and um, uh, across all of ADI's businesses. And uh, um, But for this presentation, I get to take that, um, that experience and also merge it with something that's very passionate of um, passion interests of mine, that's uh, uh, environmental uh, causes and um, social justice. So with that, I want to introduce um, the overall challenge and then eventually bring, bring it back to how uh, security plays a substantial role in, um, in our environment. So this slide here is um, it's a bit of an eye chart, but I'm going to make it easy for uh, for you to decipher. And um, and for the purpose of this uh, this presentation, um, what's important here is uh, on the left hand side you'll see what are energy uh, energy sources or or the generation of energy. And then on the the right hand side in the pink blocks you'll see how energy is utilized. And uh, then on the far, far right um, in the gray boxes, that's where um, how the energy is the effectively utilized and, and the rejected energy or energy that is wasted. Um, so there, there are five key points I want to make here. And uh, the first being is that rejected energy is, is most substantial. It's contributing to um, more than twice uh, that of used energy. <clears throat> that um, as well as uh, on the um, um, energy generated uh, portion, and that's that orange block. Um, that's electric uh, electricity generated through other means. And uh, as you can see, very little of that is used. There's a lot of rejected energy from uh, electricity generation. Another key point here is that um, the transportation block, which is that uh, lower um, your lower yellow block or pink block uh, has um, uh, is the, is the biggest contributor to uh, some of our concerns and has um, a substantial portion of that being rejected energy. And transportation and coal both um, combined to make up the uh, the largest contributors to carbon today. And finally, when we look at uh, sustainable uh, sources of energy, it's it's still a very small percentage percentage of the overall energy picture. And it's uh, it's growing slowly. Today, it's only 6%. So hopefully, this paints a, a picture of the magnitude of the challenge um, that we have. And, uh, and now I want to start talking about how IoT plays a big role in solving, solving these challenges. So first, first to note, um, uh, there are three three ways uh, to substantially impact um, uh, sustainability. And uh, one is reducing demand, and that's, um, that's through virtualization and smart solutions. Uh, another is increasing efficiency, and um, whether the power consumption of electronics using renewables and um, the effectiveness of batteries. And then the third way is uh, handling pollution, and, uh, and that's through monitoring and sequestering 
sequestration. So uh, all three of those IoT uh, solutions are are quintessential to uh, to impacting sustainability. And uh, whether that's through um, the measurement of uh, of operations or the uh, virtualization of operations or the um, um, the design of themselves to uh, to uh, make the uh, the processes more efficient. And uh, when we look um, at the me electronics megatrends, um, we early on saw the introduction of centralized computing. That went uh, a long way in um, in optimizing DNA functions at a corporate level. Um, and then then we saw the introduction of edge, uh, internet, and communications driving virtualization. And uh, today we're um, we're in a day where we have uh, AI solution, IoT systems, and um, those smart systems being embedded into an infrastructure, into the physical infrastructure to, uh, um, to greatly impact uh, sustainability on, on all three of those, um, those points previously mentioned. Uh, so, so the um, message here is that uh, uh, the the core technology to making these impacts really reside in edge computing and IoT solutions. And uh, and looking at um, how we're we're making these changes, it's um, it's both on a incremental level of making improved e efficiency, optimizing current processes, and it's also around introducing new processes and uh, and the transformational changes that. that uh, that provides, and uh, a good example of that, for instance, is um, the automobile and uh, taking a combustion engine and uh, now use, using electronic motors to uh, to power that uh, that automobile. Um, so, one thing to note here is all of its innovation, though, whether it's incremental steps or um, or transformational steps, and uh, um, and I'm going to come back to this point of taking a lot less energy to transmit the information than it does to move physical entities. And, uh, and that's the quintessential part of um, introducing smart solutions, IoT solutions into, um, into all of the infrastructural elements. Uh, so um, oh, another, another look that I want to uh, provide is how our megatrends today um, not only provide a uh, technology um, transformation, but but directly impact um, the role and play a significant role in sustainability and social impact. And so the four megatrends that I want to introduce are um, 5G, digital health, uh, autonomous uh, transportation, electrification, and um, automation and smart supply chains. <laughs> so all all four of these um, are are common megatrends. Uh, but they, they do tie um, directly to uh, making an impact. And uh, so taking 5G, for instance, to start with, and um, how it, uh, uh, it's incorporating um, a, a wireless infrastructure where, um, where new critical infrastructure can start get, getting connected, uh, re reducing the need or eliminating the need for, um, for Copper wire, for instance, and reducing reducing waste, also exponentially expanding the opportunity for um, building infrastructure in in uh, already developed areas, but also undeveloped areas. And so the the impact there is twofold. It's um, both sustainability as well as um, the social impact of that. With digital health, we're looking at introducing uh, clinical grade medical equipment outside of hospitals. Um, drastically uh, adjusting the uh, how affordable healthcare can be, but as as well as um, the accessibility and expanding the uh, the scope of accessibility. With autonomous transportation and electrification, um, we're this this too is twofold. We're introducing renewable energy, but we're also um, um, changing the the demand of uh, transportation. And um, potentially how you might even own vehicles in the future with a, a shared model. And then uh, on the <clears throat> on the automation and smart supply chain, 
Um, this one directly uh, directly affects uh, worker safety and um, and also uh, has an opportunity to to reduce waste. And coming back to the concept of taking a lot less energy to move data than than objects. Uh, so each of these um, mega trends. Uh, will make a, a huge impact and have an opportunity to make a huge impact, but it doesn't come without its challenges and um, and market-driven needs. And that's driving faster, more dynamic life cycles, um, opening up the aperture for, for more contributors, whether it's existing companies or startups, and, um, and then also ensuring that new designs uh, fit the application need and uh, are designed for efficiency and uh, and reducing the waste. And to do that, we look at, um, we've been turning for, for a long time to, uh, to the role of, of different standards in, in industries and alliances. And today we're seeing introduction of, of many more alliances um, uh, associated with these megatrends. And, uh, and these, these alliances serve a, a critical purpose. Um, and one, one for ensuring that uh, uh, markets are, are driving faster and more competitive innovation, but also um, addressing the, the aspect that IoT devices are, are embedded in physical infrastructure and, and that produ um, in itself produces uh, uh, unique requirements and challenges. And so these industry standards and alliances are, are really there to uh, ensure maintainability, reliability, um, and, uh, and anything around uh, future requirements and volatility with those, um, while while opening up the aperture for more more ecosystem partners. And uh, it's important to mention here that uh, security is a, an essential essential component of these standards. And um, as I I tie uh, the security elements or practices to the um, to the, uh, the the social elements, um, I, I want uh, the audience to keep in mind how um, how these industry bodies uh, ultimately uh, will drive uh, designs and constrained devices, and uh, uh, the importance of keeping keeping um, th this in mind with uh, with security requirements. Uh, before I get into that, though, I want to give one example of um, how the industry uh, alliances are utilized today. <clears throat> and um, I picked ORAN Alliance because uh, it's, it's fairly new, but it's, uh, it also is a, a great representation of, of the, how uh, alliances can be used to, um, to uh, solve these challenges and uh, address the needs for, for innovation. And um, so ORAN Alliance is an uh, um, alliance in, uh, that's um, uh, introduced by the operators for the operators in the area of, uh, of 5G uh, infrastructure. And um, the 26 uh, current members are listed there on the right, but uh, it's also important to note there's 182 contributing uh, alliance members in, in addition to that. Um, so th this alliance was formed to develop and encourage a uh, white box ecosystem and um, enable more more ecosystem players to participate and innovate in, and really drastically uh, changing the pace of uh, of innovation as well as that di diversity. And uh, they're they're doing this with the um, through uh, delivering a set of standard interfaces and a, a white box uh, reference design. Um, so now I want to transition more into the security role and uh, and some things to keep in mind as um, as individuals and companies participate in uh, in these industry move, moves and industry alliances. Um, so I've categorized it into to three different uh, uh, areas, um, uh, core core areas. And uh, before introducing uh, how um, security impacts electronic waste, I want to. I want to talk a little bit about the, the challenges around electronic waste. Um, so if, if you think about all of the uh, different products introduced today, and consumer goods is a, is a good example, and um, let's take cell phones, for instance, cell phones, laptops, all of these uh, uh, electronics have a limited life cycle and eventually are disposed of, and hopefully disposed of in a, in a 
environmental friendly way, especially considering most of these devices have uh, have batteries. But um, recycling these uh, components are, are very costly and very challenging and not very um, effective, to be honest. So uh, there's, there's a lot of ways this problem needs to be addressed, but uh, we have an opportunity to reduce the, um, the extent of the problem by uh, ex extending the usable life of products. And security becomes a, a key element of the architecture in order to do that. And that's through life cycle management of a device itself, but also enabling second lives for products and um, avoiding the need to dispose of, of the, uh, the usable um, product itself. And then, then of course, um, making sure the architecture supports uh, um, a, a future-proof design, so updatability and uh, um, a platform, a hardware platform where software innovation and uh, software-defined solutions can take place. And so security and the security architecture of that needs to be something at the very forefront of, uh, of these designs and, and uh, thought process going into any new design. So moving on to the um, uh, product waste standpoint, uh, this, this goes back to the concept of um, constrained devices. And IoT uh, exists primarily in a constrained environment. Uh, when you're embedding sensors into uh, different uh, different physical objects and, and um, um, products, and uh, and so a security concept that's um, intended to uh, uh, to minimize um, cost and uh, and power, and that's uh, that goes into a, a thought process of of uh, a system approach to security and looking at it from a risk standpoint, but also um, from the uh, uh, introduction of standards and uh, supported algorithms, for instance, ensuring that um, the algorithms that are selected and standardized around are a subset of the total possibility. Um, it, we don't, uh, it, oftentimes um, it's, it's easy to take a data center approach to these standards and say, okay, we're gonna support 26 different algorithms. But limiting the amount of algorithms these constrained devices need to support can greatly uh, reduce the, the physical size of the device and the efficiency of the device. Um, so keeping that in mind, especially participating in these standard bodies. And then uh, the, the final piece here is maybe more traditional approach to, to how you might consider security impacting uh, um, social, uh, social impact. And that's, um, that's Safety, safety and security being synonymous, whether it's industrial automation or an autonomous vehicle, um, safeguarding user privacy, especially when we are thinking about um, uh, digital health solutions. Uh, secure by default, not everyone has the same propensity to security as, as uh, security experts might. So um, ensuring that uh, it's not a option, but a, um, uh, a default uh, goes a long ways in protecting the uh, the users. And then the intuitive and easy, it's not just at a user level. Um, designing products that are intuitive and easy to, uh, from a security IP or architecture standpoint, to integrate into an application by other design teams, uh, lim limiting or eliminating the need for um, uh, adjusting the security functions of that um, so that vulnerabilities aren't accidentally introduced. And um, hopefully that ties uh, ties security back to the, the overall message and uh, um, the scope and role IoT plays in uh, in these problems um, at a at a broad scale. Um, I I want to uh, close with um, to some some security practices to keep in mind as it relates to enabling the sustainable global eco ecosystems. And um, some of these are, are pretty uh, basic and uh, uh, known for for many reasons, but um, but just want to highlight uh, uh, highlight these uh, these five principles. Um, conformance to industry standards that's that's key for many reasons, uh, but especially when ensuring default uh, or or minimum set of securities uh, adhered to. Uh, reusability um, I think goes a long way in 
um, in maximizing the application of, of security. So uh, designing a security subsystem, for instance, that can be integrated into multiple applications will go um, will serve to reduce the design cycle time and uh, help help bring new solutions um, uh, to life quicker, but also in a way that's uh, already uh, proven and certified. And size, uh, this, this is big, um, being able to uh, uh, size to the application and the risk. And that's, um, that goes beyond just uh, uh, let's, let's constrain uh, what we're forcing to go into these devices to also let's look at the risk the device um, uh, has to the entire system and uh, size the security solution to that risk. And, um, and that system approach also goes to uh, uh, the next block, which is implementing it at the right layers within the system. And finally, um, when we architect these designs, keeping in mind uh, uh, feature enablement, updatability, but also where this product might be able to live in the future and uh, um, architecting that for, for life cycle uh, requirements, but also second life. Um, so hopefully this is a uh, this provided some uh, um, practical application, but uh, it definitely is is a um, topic that uh, that's near and dear to my heart. So um, I hope uh, hope this provides some some useful uh, insight into uh, future product discussions or designs and and um, additional contribution to uh, the current alliances out there today. Um, with that, I'll turn it back over to you, Joe.